So we're going to jump back into Jason Beer's update on the disclosure issues from the post office to the post office Horizon IT inquiry. And the post office currently have five reviews, five disclosure reviews being undertaken and have dumped in the past couple of months an additional 73,000 documents onto the inquiry for them to handle. How are they dealing with this and what's the inquiry's response? Let's jump into the inquiry. Importantly, the letter said that the post office anticipated making yet further productions of material uh, following five further reviews. It confirmed that the reviews were not related to the Microsoft Exchange remediation process. But as noted already, the documents were relevant to phases five and six and to witnesses scheduled to be called as early as this week. Those five reviews were summarised by the post office as follows. First, the third party advisor and personal assistant review. Secondly, the NAS drive and file share review. Thirdly, the supplementary precautionary Mimecast review arising from the five, phase five and six remediation review at the hard copy documents review. And finally, the Patrick Bork 2017 Mimecast data review. So essentially a variety of digital and, well, they're all digital sources by the sounds of it, but a variety of, shall we say, online or cloud-based services, as well as kind of internal shared drives at the post office. The post office did not provide the numbers of documents for witnesses um, uh, commencing this week, although they anticipated providing those numbers shortly. Between the 2nd of April and the 5th of April, the inquiry re received seven further letters about um, one or more of those reviews. Those letters have also been provided to core participants, and I shouldn't repeat them. Within those letters, the Post Office disclosed a number of additional documents as follows. On the 3rd of April, 196 documents were disclosed, said to be from the NAS drive. The Post Office said they were continuing to collect material from the Post Office file share that might be relevant to the Phase 5 and 6 hearings. However, the inquiry understands such a measure to be out of an abundance of caution. Also on the 3rd of April, 3,188 documents were disclosed, said to be from, quote, uh, further material identified from third-party advisor files and material identified as part of a second assurance review involving searches of email inboxes of personal assistance to Section 21.3 individuals and other inboxes of potential relevance where considered appropriate. This was further to the 1,071 documents already disclosed to the inquiry back on the 28th of March. On Friday the 5th of April, so the Friday that's just passed, the Post Office disclosed 189 documents following a review of Post Office's hard copy material, 200 documents following an additional precautionary Mimecast review, a further 374 documents were disclosed, said to be the third tranche of documents, including, quote, further material identified as part of a second assurance review involving searches of email inboxes of personal assistance to Section 21.3 individuals. This was in addition to the 1,071 documents disclosed on the 28th of March and the 3,188 documents disclosed two days further. So essentially, in like the last week and a half, literally thousands upon thousands of documents have been dumped on the inquiry. The post office said that it was now, quote, urgently reviewing data for personal assistance to the Section 21 three individuals who are witnesses and are due to give evidence from the 23rd of April onwards. And they anticipated they would provide the documents to the inquiry on or before this Friday, the 12th of April. So taking the five reviews about which the inquiry was um, informed on the 2nd of April in turn, I understand the position to be as follows. The third party advisor and personal assistant review has seen the disclosure of a total of 4,633 documents since the 28th of March alone. The post office has told us that that review is not yet complete. The NAS drive and file share saw the disclosure of 196 documents from the NAS drive last week, but the review is ongoing in relation to other witnesses. The supplementary precautionary Mimecast review arising from the Phase 5-6 remediation review saw the disclosure of 200 documents, but that's now said to be complete. 
the hard copy documents review saw the disclosure of 189 documents last week. It's unclear if that review is complete or remains ongoing. The Patrick Bork 2017 Mimecast data work appears to be ongoing. We understand the data is being collected and processed urgently. The volume and timing of such disclosure is unknown, but the post office said that they were working to disclose any further documents well in advance of at Patrick Bork's hearing on the 7th of May. So we in the inquiry team wish to inform you and the core participants of uh, these developments without delay. They present issues with which the inquiry has become um, extremely and unfortunately familiar uh, with over the past three years. I should also put the uh, developments in a wider context since the end of the phase four hearings alone, so that since the closing submissions on the 2nd of February 2024, the post office has disclosed 73,720 documents to the inquiry. Wow, like nearly 74,000 documents since February have been dumped on the inquiry. Now, it's important that everything gets disclosed, but it was the, the inquiry and the phases were set out years ago the fact it's taken years and years to get this evidence and it's only really seemingly being dumped on the inquiry moments before it's needed in comparison i mean the amount of manpower required to go through that number of documents in that amount of time to ensure that the witnesses can give evidence unimpeded and with the inquiry having a full view that, of what was going on it's it's neither fair on the inquiry certainly not fair on the sub postmaster it's not fair on the witnesses is it it's probably one of the reasons why they're having to produce numerous witness statements as more and more evidence is produced it really would be in everybody's interests if this process is speeded up again of which the inquiry legal team have characterized 67,210 documents as possibly relating to phases five and six of the inquiry. The inquiry has received um, documents from other providers during that time, albeit none as substantial in volume as the post office. And the inquiry's information management team have confirmed that as of late yesterday, at least 78,211 documents, including but not limited to the post office's documents, that likely or potentially relate to phases five and six of the inquiry may fall for disclosure to core participants. I mean, at what point does it look like, you know, it's almost potentially trying to delay the inquiry with all this kind of document dumping that's going on right before the reference time when they need it? The matters that the inquiry is investigating span two decades and a number of uh, detailed issues. In order to proceed with hearings in a meaningful way, the inquiry has needed to prioritise its disclosure to core participants and will continue to do so. It's with this in mind that we in the inquiry team specifically set deadlines for the receipt of the late exchange material likely to be relevant to the phase five and six um, hearings on a witness by witness and week by week basis in order to ensure that the hearings could go ahead as planned. This was communicated to the post office and the inquiry understood that the post office considered that it had completed its phase five, six exchange remediation exercises by the 22nd of March. The obligation of disclosure to the inquiry is of course ongoing. The inquiry had expected and indeed anticipated ongoing disclosure from providers of documents in certain instances. Documents can be found late, hard copies or electronic files or messages may up, turn up in unexpected devices. But the issues that the post office's disclosure to this inquiry have presented have been much more than minor ad hoc or additional disclosure. In particular, the post office's assurance review, as it uh, has called it, of personal assistant emails and other inboxes of potential relevance in response to the inquiry's Section 21.3 notice of last year is very concerning. As I say, that notice was sent in July of last year. It lists a number of senior key post office uh, individuals. Such individuals would undoubtedly communicate via their personal assistants. The inboxes of what are called 
uh, inboxes of potential relevance have not been explained by the post office, so we don't know to whom uh, they relate. Even more concerning, the inquiry emphasised that, that the post office ought to apply a common sense approach to senior custodians as far back as a meeting with the post office in April 2023. So you asked for your clean team closely to monitor the post office's disclosure to the inquiry. We have done so and will continue to do so. Uh, whilst these new developments are, uh, to use a parliamentary word, unwelcome, your team is not unprepared. But we're committed to doing all that we can to ensure that the hearings can go ahead as planned. And subject to your views, that's what we intend to do, to continue with the hearings. The alternative, further delay to allow the post office to get its disclosure house in order is not one which is acceptable. It of course follows from that approach that there may be a need to recall some witnesses to ask them questions about documents which have not been processed in time for them to be asked questions about such documents in the coming weeks. So that's the, the approach that we um, intend to take and that's all I say at the moment about this latest late post office disclosure.